Welcome to the Found Her Podcast. We are two women who knew nothing about starting a business, but with our faith and a lot of determination, we founded our company that has grown to over seven figures in just three years. We're sharing all that we've learned, our secrets to building a brand and a long-lasting foundation to gain time and financial freedom. We're both moms to four kiddos, and through the peaks and valleys of being a business owner, we're finding our true purpose, and it's more than we ever imagined. So join us as we get real and have some fun along the way. Happy Friday, Dee Dee. How's it going? Good. How are you? Happy Friday. Happy Friday. TGIF. Thank goodness, huh? Uh, and yeah. not only that, school vacation starting. School vacation is starting. I know. What are you? What are you gonna do? Nothing. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Literally nothing. I um, don't know if business owners don't always get the perks of like being being home on all the breaks but no it's a staycation we're home um yeah no I feel like well we're, we're going away in June so if, if I do a June vacation my kids don't get we don't do anything <laughs> they else. don't get anything they don't, they don't get else another, they don't get another vacation and then we're doing um like a spring one next year so we're staying home this year no yeah, it'll be good yeah, yeah. I feel like I want to just do like little day trips yeah and my little guy's gone and so it's just all girls all week Mm-hmm. So we can actually like go shopping and like do the stuff that the boys never want to do. So oh, I'm jealous. I might tag along. Yeah, I'm sure you can hang out with us for hours at Sephora because that's where we'll be. <laughs> oh no, yes. And while while you're doing that, I'll be at home doing all the boy things with a baseball glove on my hand. You okay. secretly love it, and no, you I do. Know I do. It. I do. We did it on Easter, and it was amazing. Um, yeah, I've been saving the story. Okay. I, don't, I, I didn't even tell you personally. No, I don't know what it. I don't know what the story is at all. But I want to hear it. I'm getting on a soapbox. Love it. This is a soapbox for anyone that does not have a big family or is not part of a big family, and also for those of you that have a big family. I, I'm sure you're gonna understand what I'm saying. So we went out to dinner on Saturday night, and so we have you know four kids and it ranges eight to four, right? And it's a lot. Um, mm-hmm. And we, we get a lot of looks and questions. Like, I, I've had people ask me, why did you have twins? Well, well, last time I checked, it's not a vending machine that I get to choose. Um, mm-hmm. However, like, why would you ever say that to somebody? It's funny, because I don't even think of four as being that big. No. Anything more than four, five, six, seven, eight, that I think is yeah. a big family. But yeah. four, it just seems. No. And honestly, once you lose man-to-man coverage, it's Maybe all it's a little bit more than average, but it doesn't seem like a big deal. Right. Well, we went out to dinner Saturday night, and... Um, I tried something new. I brought like these mess free for the twins, like to color or whatever. And mm-hmm. so we were prepared and it was early. We went earlier. It was only five thirty. Um, early bird special. Yeah, I love it. Now I'm in. <laughs> but the amount of people that were staring at us the entire time was absurd. Were like the kids behaving, yeah, or were they, were they like they were nobody great. was throwing or screaming? Because obviously no. you get the looks when they're crying. No, but. they were all great. They were coloring. They were doing things. Um, Rhett spilled his water when we first sat down, but no one was looking at us then. Yeah. Um, but this this one family that was next to us, I think one of the people might have turned around. Uh, I don't know, fifteen times, and just looked Why? at me. Another one that was there with their family had had a young child, and I was like, Why, why do you keep looking at me? Like you're in my boat, like what what yeah what am I doing like at first I was like what's happening yeah and then this this other uh, couple is seated at the end they get they seated they got seated after us and I I just you know you can feel someone looking at you it's like you can feel it <laughs> yeah and I'm like and I'm sitting at like the head of the table right like it was like the two two kids on either side and then Tyler's at one side and I'm at the other so and I, my back was to the wall so yeah. I could see everything yeah and I was like all these people are staring at me and then, you know, people leave or whatever. Are you sure and you didn't have, like, toilet paper on your I'm shoe? Sure, I'm sure. Well, I was sitting. I'm sure. <laughs> but then when we were leaving, this the couple that had sat down commented on how well-behaved our kids were and polite and well-mannered. Great. Like, they all order, may I please have a water? May yeah. I please have chocolate milk? Like, we make them order. Yeah. And when they don't order appropriately, we correct them in the moment. I want to be like, lady, thanks so much. You could have told me that, like, I don't know, an hour ago. When you were staring at me, like why, me. Right, like why you were paying attention to me. So whatever, I she let it go. She was in awe of how amazing you and your family were. And so I let it go. Then we go to the grocery store the next day. And I only had the twins. 
And I still think I felt like I that whole... You were still self-conscious about it. Like everybody looking at me. Yeah. And so, especially if you're raising boys, like this was the thing that tipped me over the edge. Mm-hmm. So I did my grocery shopping for the week. I had my list and I took the twins. And they're too big to now be, you know, sitting in a cart. And there's two of them and they're the mm-hmm. same age and they both want to go. So they, they go on the sides of the carriage, right? Yeah. That's great. And now I'm checking and... and this one lady, I was getting, like, literally, I'm getting yogurt out of the freezer thingy, whatever, the fridge thing, putting it into the cart, and this one lady, in the, I'm <laughs> getting that. And I have my kid, and she's like, excuse me, can I get in there? Yeah, one second. Like, I'm literally just grabbing my stuff. <laughs> and she literally tried to, like, get in there. And I was like, is this a joke? And she's with her husband. Like, the two of them thought this was completely normal to just what? make me step aside so she could get what she needed when she needed it. And I'm like... I- I have little kids with me. You're by yourself. You don't seem like you're in a rush, and this is an emergency for (laughs) yogurt, for your flips, yogurt flips. (laughs) Emergency yogurt. Emergency yogurt. So I was like, whatever. So then, you know, I finish, go check out. We're loading up the cart, and the guy says, and I love me a Publix, because, you know, Publix, they they take your cart for you. Mm. It doesn't matter if you have one bag or 20. They push your cart for you, because that's what they do. Oh, out to the car? Yeah. Yeah, that's what they do. So they are like, Ma'am, you're going to need a second cart. Wegmans also does the same. If you have two carts, they take your second one for you. And I was like, I'm sure. I hate having to need a second cart. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm like, I can't push both carts. It's just me and I have them and it's a parking lot and I'm parkway at the back. Like, I can't take both. Thinking, I don't know, maybe will someone offer to help me? That's okay. You can just leave it right here. Okay, well, that means I have to go out there, unload it, get make them walk back in with me to then take another one to walk back out. And I was like, I, I got to fit it. There's no way. I can't fit it. So I'm like, that's okay. Then I see, I don't know, three employees just standing there. Not one person. They're just standing there talking. Not one person. I'm pretty sure they're all on the clock. Offered to help me. Yeah. And so I'm pushing this giant cart full. And then I'm pulling my cart. And Bryce and Rhett, I'm making push on the other side. Which, Mm -hmm. by the way. Can they even reach? (laughs) No. And they can't see over it. And I'm going into a parking lot where I then can't see them. You can't see them. They can't see anything. What about if they run? Like, all the all the nerves. I must have walked by, I don't know, six, seven people. Your hand's full, huh? Wow, your hands are really full, huh? Not one person mm-hmm. said, can I help you with that? Do you want? I can, let me push that cart for you. I had literally two bags in there. Could I have carried them? Maybe, but I, I couldn't because they were paper. It, it was disastrous, right? Now, how do I push the cart? And I'm so I'm pushing yeah. and pulling, and I've got the twins at the back, and the amount of people that either stared at me uh-huh. or commented, "Wow, look how much groceries! Is that just for a week?" Oh or your hands are full, huh? And no one offered to help me. Grown men, yeah commenting to me not moms i walked by some that just smiled uh-huh. at me like oh you poor thing right <laughs> poor you and in that moment i the rage in my blood mm-hmm. because of everything the day before and then this day and i i, I called tyler immediately and i was like i don't care because we've gotten a lot people look at us weird and and how what we make our kids do and how we make them be helpful and like whatever i don't really care it's very old school and i don't care i have never been more confident and have such conviction over how we're raising them yeah like if i was walking with one of my kids particularly jake because he's probably the only one that could do could do that and saw a mother with younger kids struggling i would have made jake go push that cart Mm -hmm. go help yeah and i don't care like we are especially raising boys we have such a responsibility to teach them respect and and like kindness like go help just to be kind just be kind or and if you don't say anything why would you ever say anything don't say anything if you're gonna say something say can i push that for you and it's not like you're pushing the yeah. cart two miles you're literally i don't know why people say that it's like the most common thing that people say and i remember getting it all the time too when the girls were little and i started to say better full than empty oh that's a good one yeah better full than empty i would just say that back to everybody yeah like i don't think it's it's I don't think that's mean. Is it mean? Like No, no. Gosh, no. It's not mean. But, <laughs> but I you think... have to say something back because right. I don't know why people say that. Like, what is the point of saying, like, got your hands full? Yeah. I do. I do. Yours aren't. You want to help? <laughs> like, I should have said, can you help me? Like, I thought about it. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And I just realized in that moment, like, I am never yeah. walking by somebody, not offering to help, 
never saying something that I should never say, but also like just the lessons to teach the boys now is like, and you know, it could be an elderly person. It could be somebody with a ton of kids. It could just be someone with, you know, in a wheelchair or crutches or I don't know, somebody that just looks like they need something like just right. offer to help. Oh my gosh. I have a story. <laughs> Maybe I'll save it. No, don't. Go. Uh, Speaking of helping people, well, we live in a community where we don't have a lot of homeless or like really just in our little town. It's like just a little teeny town and pretty much everybody knows everybody. And you just don't often see people that are in need of help, Mm -hmm. right? Um, But Emmy is like, she's just really kind and sweet hearted. And I... She came, I went to pick her up at Dunkin' Donuts and she came out and she's like, mom, there's a guy in there that needs help. Can can we get him an Uber? And I was like, well, that's weird. And immediately I thought, you're so gullible. He's just trying to get money from you. Like right. I immediately went to all these negative things. Like, what do you mean? There's some strange guy in there talking to a bunch of like teenage girls. Like immediately I just was like, this seems weird. You must like right. be so naive right, right. to think that because the world we live in now, that's a common thought. Right? right? So I immediately went down that road. I was like, no, I'm not. Like, I don't know this guy. Like, this is weird. He's been talking to you guys in, in dunks by yourselves. Like, this is super weird. And she's like, no, mom, he's like totally normal. He just needs help. You know, he came from Franklin on the train. He walked all the way from Franklin to our town, which is like far. 10 miles. Probably. No. Miles. Okay, fine. <laughs> 10. Still, it's still a long walk. It's a. Yeah. No, from from the um the st- whatever the furthest train station is on oh. the other side of Franklin. Like oh. it's far. I don't know. Anyway. Um anyway, he'd walked all the way there. He didn't speak English. He didn't know how to get home. He didn't all he could say was train. Like our town doesn't have a train. Like he couldn't get back to the train. He was from Newton. And oh my gosh. he just needed to get back to the Franklin train to get the train to Newton. I was like, oh my gosh. So like he wrote down his name and his address and everything on a piece of paper. And I got him an Uber. And I waited in the parking lot for the Uber to come and get him. And I told him. And like literally his eyes just, well, he's like, I have $5. And I was oh my like, gosh. I was like, no, no, no. Like, of course, it's fine. Right, like, of course, yeah. I'm going to get you a ride. And his eyes just like welled up with tears and he was just like thank you right. so much or whatever <laughs> and it was so funny so I wait for him he gets in the uber car and like so I drive away and I get a text from him because I had sent him the uber like confirmation or whatever and he texted me back thank you I love you <laughs> ma'am where am I going <laughs> I was like I never told him where he was going. Oh my gosh. I was like, you're going to the train to, you know, to go home or whatever. He was like, oh, thank you. I love you. (laughs) Oh gosh. But he like got into a strange car and was like, ma'am, where am I going? (laughs) Oh "Oh, shoot. Forgot to tell you where you were going. But anyway, and it also like made the girls day that they could like help in that way too. But it's just not every day in like our little community that you get to do stuff like that. So. Right. And it's it life lessons. Cool. It's like teaching. Yeah. I don't know. We have a we have a responsibility to teach our kids and it starts as as young as you possibly can. But the respect and manners and kindness is so freaking important. I know. I know. Anyways, I'm off my soapbox, but well just don't look at people that have a lot of kids and make them feel bad. <laughs> Help say them. anything. Say well, something. I told you also. I got I got the comment to to a couple of days ago about what an age ga- gap I have between. Oh my gosh, I know my third grader and my seventh grader. Oh, quite a gap there. Yeah, I I lost twins in between there. Like, should I have said that and made them feel so terrible? Like, no, I didn't say I didn't say anything. And I was like, yep. Like, who cares? What's oh it to you? I don't. Why are you saying that? Like. I know. It was just people so weird. Just don't. I don't know why people feel the need to say anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who cares how much of an age gap there is? Like, yep, Parker was an accident. <laughs> he totally wasn't. He was very much on purpose. But <laughs> well, and also that, like, why? What why? if he was? <laughs> like, who cares? Right. But like, why say anything? Say nothing. Just say nothing. And my gosh, if you ever oh. see somebody that needs help, 
Go yeah. for it. And that's the end of today's podcast. Say nothing. No. <laughs> I'm kidding. Be kind. Help people. Be kind and help people. Oh, my goodness. Uh, today, though, we wanted to talk a little bit about leadership. Yeah. Which is a total transition from that. Well, you're talking about leading your family, though. Yeah, you are. And this, I'd love to. They look to you like. Yeah. They learn how to be from you. Right. And so, I mean, we can talk about leaders from like an entrepreneur standpoint, but, but. also many of us are leaders of our own home. You mm-hmm. know, like how do you lead your children? How do you lead your household? How yeah. do you lead in wherever you work? Right. We're very much empowering that everybody on our team really leads something. Yeah. Right? You have to. Everybody does. So we're really big on personal development and we're going to talk a little bit about it. But I feel like you are like the leadership guru. I look to you as like, you've taught me a lot about how to lead. I've never looked at myself as a leader. I joke that I have always just thought of myself as bossy. (laughs) I've always been told I'm the oldest. I think the oldest are just naturally bossier people maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Or maybe they're natural born leaders as they say, but you don't believe in natural born leaders. No. Talk about that. Yeah. I don't think that, sure, do, is there is there s- certain characteristics or skill sets that people might be born with mm-hmm. that n- give them the potential right. to be a great leader? Absolutely. But a lot of these skills can be taught. Yeah. Um, and you're never, you know, when I when I was a district manager, people would say, oh, I'm, I'm working on leadership. I'm like, so what does that mean? Define that. Like, what Reading part a book? of leadership? Like. <laughs> <laughs> what what skill exactly right? Right, right because there's so many different facets of it um and I could go on this is something I could talk about I, I don't know I know it's like this might have to be a part one and a part two yeah so it's, so what skills do you think a good leader would have and you can talk about what skills that a leader might innately have within them mm-hmm. or that can be taught or just even well I'll just say because I don't have as much leadership background as you do but like when I hear what is a leader and people talk about this all the time yeah, like yeah. What, what makes what a good a leader? leader right yeah. I think of somebody who's in charge of a lot of things who's very influential who's highly respected who's um, can command a room I don't know I think of big leaders like that's what I think of in leadership. Like I think of somebody who can command a room, who is well spoken, who is influential and uh, inspirational, mm-hmm. positive, driven. Mm-hmm. And then when I look at myself, I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm bossy. No, no, I, no but no, I don't no. necessarily see myself in that. And I think that's kind of. Maybe the disconnect and why we talk a lot about it with our team, because Mm -hmm. a lot of everyday people don't see themselves like that. And that's okay. Right. That doesn't necessarily mean that's what every leader has to look like. Right. Yeah. Every leader is different. I don't think that there's necessarily, you know, a recipe card that makes up a leader. Uh, You need to have, you know, 5% listening skills, 10% emotional intelligence, 20% communication. Like it's not, it's not that way. It's about... Um, and I don't, I get, I hesitate sometimes when I try to describe it because I don't want anybody, I don't want like, which does she really know what she's talking about? Because it really, it, it's, it's a blended, it's like put it all in a mixer, yeah. right? And mix it all up because every day you're going to have to lean on and leverage different skills. It's not that, you know, you operate on the same pattern every single day. Mm-hmm. Um, I think emotional intelligence is probably one of the most important things, right? If you're leading mm-hmm. others, you've got to be in tune because we're people, uh, communication, both listening and verbal, is so important. Um, the ability to influence others and create a, a cast a vision, but then provide an action plan and set goals and all the logistical pieces behind it. Um, confidence, I think. Mm-hmm. Confidence is huge. If you're wishy-washy and you're like, eh, I don't know if we should really do this or not. Nobody's following you. No. Nobody's listening to you no. or respecting your ideas, nope. right? No. Nope. Nope. Um, I heard something the other day, though, that I really resonated with me was a a true leader has the ability to make a lot of mistakes and to like adjust pivot. Yeah, right. Super fast. And I was like, yes, that's exactly it, because mistakes are bound to happen. But if you can't adjust your mindset and your Mm -hmm. attitude, even in your vision, how you handle it and how you handle all of the bumps that come along the way. 
I was like, yes, that is it, to handle all the mistakes. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that translates into motherhood, too, because, oh, my gosh, every day is like a different disaster. All right. You've got to, like, juggle. But that's also what makes a good leader, even of your household. Yeah. And I think back when I I think about all of, like, the things that we just talked about, right? Like, none of that was natural. Uh, Those aren't natural things that you're just born with. They're they're skill sets that you – fine tune and develop and work on. And some days like yeah. you're going to be better at other things than other days. And that's okay. Yeah. What do you think about uh, like your risk assessment? Because I do feel like really successful entrepreneurs or who I think of as leaders are risk takers. Like if I look at people who I look up to, they've taken risks and they've paid off, which have gotten to them to I think those really are, where they are. But I think those are two different things. Two different things. As Do you think the risk has anything to do with leadership no. or none? Mm-mm. Totally separate things. Yeah, because you can be an entrepreneur of yourself and, and lead yourself and, yeah. and identifying risk, sure. But also if you're responsible for leading others, um, I mean – everything you do is a risk. Every hire you make is a risk. It's just a matter of weighing that risk. Right. Well, right. And it kind of goes back to being decisive mm-hmm. too. Yeah. So, and, and knowing, you know, I, I used to coach store managers when they were making hiring decisions. I was like, you could promote somebody yeah. internally or you could hire externally. Any way you look at it, it's a risk. The person that mm-hmm. you develop or promote internally could struggle. The person that you hire externally could not be the right fit. So it's just a matter of which risk you want to take. But I don't necessarily feel like that's a leadership piece um because being an entrepreneur you might not be leading anybody yet but you still might have to have risk assessment as part of your skill set true but i think part of the fear is like not accepting defeat specifically obviously if you're a new entrepreneur yeah who i mean you're getting so many things thrown at you you could easily throw in the towel at any moment yeah and even like, and I'm going to keep pulling it back to motherhood and like what we talked about at the beginning, but right. if you just threw in the towel, like when your kid's a little shit and you're like, I give up, I'm done. Like, I don't know what else to do with you. That's every single afternoon, honestly. Wow. Like you, you can't, you right. just can't accept defeat. And I feel like having that gut instinct to just keep going, try something different, try something new. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's not true leadership. Maybe that's just entrepreneurship or stick to itiveness. It's a big <laughs> word, huh? It's a new one. I think, um, yeah, I mean, it's also for not giving up when you have people that, you know, stare at you. Yeah. Not saying I'm not going to go out to eat until they're 20 because people are going to, <laughs> you know, you're not going to do that. So, yeah, I think another key component that I hadn't given a lot of weight to before though is a leadership's attention to detail I think you often assume leaders leaders have a big vision like you talked about mm-hmm. casting a big vision big picture ideas and visions but I think that true leadership you're really also focused and noticing the details because if you don't have all the details that support all of your big ideas, they're mm-hmm. more likely to fall apart. Yeah, but sometimes, too, not all of the details have to come from the leader. They don't necessarily have to come from the leader, but I think that the leader needs to notice them to tweak them and fix them. Mm. It's like cracks in the foundation. Yeah, but they shouldn't be the ones fixing them either. Well, you got to then train somebody to see them. <laughs> Right. I think, you know, I, I, they have to, you can't be an effective leader of a business or a team if you don't, if you're not truly immersed in it and understand it. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think that's probably more in, in line with what you're trying to say is like, you can't just be over here, but I'm the leader of this team, but the whole team's over here. Yeah. And well, here's my vision. It gets tricky. There's no way to get them over here with you. Yeah. Right? Like well, you've got to. I'll talk to like a little bit of an example that we have found. And this is, gets a little bit tricky and we might argue about this, but mm. <laughs> like, hmm, bring it on. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> well, in the past, we like, I'll just do like social media for an example. I feel like we knew what we wanted to do but we had never actually done it ourselves. We were trying to outsource, right? You're trying to get things off your plate. So you just hire somebody to outsource 
that portion because it's too much and and we're in favor of outsourcing and like absolutely yeah. getting things off of your plate that you might not be an expert in but it was a process that we had never really walked through or fine-tuned ourselves and so we actually found it hard to measure goals and know what was acceptable to mm-hmm. like how long something should take right like we yeah. didn't know what were attainable goals or what to expect because we had never actually walked through the process ourself mm-hmm. so we really decided ultimately that not that we have to do it ourselves forever but we actually needed to step back and actually create the process walk through the process figure it out for ourselves and then we could then we could hire it out and have reasonable expectations because we had done it mm-hmm. does that make sense mm-hmm. I agree with you for sure but it's like you've got to figure it all out to know what to expect. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it does. It makes complete sense. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, well, then I guess we didn't argue well, about it. Yeah. But I, I, I guess if you if you want to argue about it, we can. <laughs> it's because that's not leadership, though. It's managing. You're managing a task. You're managing an outcome. You're not leading anybody. You're You're managing a process. Okay, so talk a little bit more about leadership versus management. Oh, boy. It's kind of like follow-up versus micromanagement. Uh Mm. Uh-huh. So when I think about leadership, leadership is people-oriented. When I think about management is process-oriented. I think that's the easiest way to separate the two. Uh Um, Mm-hmm. And when I think about, um, for me, when I uh, just listening, right, and going back to what I said in the very beginning for some characteristics, I would say – a great leader has strong emotional intelligence mm-hmm. because that's going to translate across so many facets of your business, your home, regard, whatever we're talking about. The ability to understand and read people, to motivate and inspire, dig in if they're struggling, ask questions if they're unhappy, whatever it right. might be. But without them having to say something, to have the EQ to be able to recognize something's great here I'm gonna push harder or something's not yeah. right here and I gotta pull back and figure out what's wrong because an effective leader think about you go back to coaching all of the time mm-hmm. every time I just go keep going back to when I was a DM when you were I would play Nick Saban videos all day long and then, and then I would talk to my leaders that ran the floor or a store and I'm like when was the last time Nick Saban put on his helmet and went out on the field <laughs> he didn't yeah. So as a leader, if you're always the one that's suiting up and putting on your helmet, yeah. you're not a leader. You're an executor. Right. You're an executor, which is what that brings me back to the whole like outsourcing yeah. thing, because if you're buried in all of the day to day details and grind and the do, 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 yeah. you will have no time or energy or insight to what everybody else on your team needs or like from capacity. You. Capacity, yeah, like right? There's done. no capacity because right. you're doing, doing, doing mm-hmm. everything. So you can't be that, you know, emotional support to anybody else on your team right. in order to lead or inspire because you're drowning. Mm-hmm. And that, um, you know, to be there for your team, sometimes it's, it's hard. It's exhausting because every single person that you're leading it's like you got to put on a different hat because you're going to talk to them differently. You're going to yeah. listen differently. Their skill set, they're in a different place. They're personal, whatever it might be. Yeah. It's like, you just think about your kids. The way I talk to my eldest is so much different than the way that I talk to my youngest. <laughs> that's my problem. <laughs> right? Like, it's like, and then you're like emotionally exhausted by the time that you're finished with your day. Mm-hmm. And you might feel you didn't accomplish anything because your mindset is always on a checklist or a to-do list. But the more time you invest in the people, I'm going to get yelled at from my microphone. The more time that you invest in the people and help develop them, your yeah. checklist is going to get shorter because they can do the work for you and with you mm-hmm. and probably better than you. Well, that's the goal, right? The goal is, right? Like, I don't want to be the best. <laughs> I am the best TikToker <laughs> around. Gosh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, I think, um, but I think one thing that you've always done a really great job of in our company is investing in the people. <clears throat> so a year ago, and we've we've pivoted from this a little bit and tried different things because I think that's normal. But you got to figure out what works. Can you talk a little yeah. bit about last year and what we did 
for the the personal development. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That we did for each team member individually. Yeah, we spent a lot of time just going through um, and setting up touch bases. We created smart action plans that were personally uh, for our team and skill sets they wanted to develop not had nothing right. to do with business. Right. Someone could be struggling with managing their time. That's going to transcend past mm-hmm. your day to day, right? That's going to take you into your personal yeah. life. Um, Somebody else's was just effective communication, priority setting, right? Right. Like there were so many. And so we spent, we split up the team um, mm-hmm. and we spent time with them. And then I sat in with everybody who was leading at first to help, but I didn't help. And that's a really good point, yeah. though, is that. We were not the people doing the whole them, the no. whole team's developments. Mm-hmm. All of the other leaders in the company were doing development, in, right? It wasn't all coming from us. Right. Way to go there, Pyburn. You were first, so dude, <laughs> silence. <laughs> um, but yeah, and it was it was great too because and then I remember my role when I was sat in. It was just helping the leader ask the right questions because it's all about the question that you ask to help get there, right? And then right. are you listening to what right. what people are telling you? But yeah, and I think that I mean we just also bought um, we took it a little bit different. Our team did self evaluations this year, didn't put action plans in place. So now we said, all right, let's reflect, let's see how are we doing, mm-hmm. um, and what, ask them what they wanted to work on. What, yeah, and then based in each meeting that we had as the team was talking about whatever it was, yeah, it was I was awesome. I was on Google um, finding a book for them. So we bought them books and gave it to them. And again, it has nothing to do with work. It's just personal things. That right. But I want. think investing in, well, this is, this is just a fact, but we've had great retention at our company. And I think it goes back to personal development. When you're yeah. investing in people personally and developing them mm-hmm. personally. Yeah. I mean, sure, maybe people need to, to come with a certain skill set, but most of the time, not. No. You know, you're coming with personality qualities, honestly, that are a good fit for what your team needs. Most things can be learned. Yeah. And I think a lot of times, at the beginning, what we were doing, too, is we spent a lot of time leveraging a strength. We weren't saying, like, right. all right, what, what are you bad at? Let's fix that. Because they're probably never going to be good at it. No. I procrastinate. I don't want to do the stuff I don't like to do. That's why I don't fold the laundry until I have to. <laughs> I don't want to. Like, I just don't want to. It's not going to change. It's not. Yeah. But I think, you know, leaning into people where they're strong, mm-hmm. helping them. If there's something that they personally want to develop in, investing that time is never wasted. Um, and just being there. But, yeah, it was really – we were we just switched our payroll system, and I was looking at, like – higher dates and I could not out of out of everybody only one person hadn't been here for almost two years that's awesome especially in a small business that is really awesome Mm -hmm. and we're yeah we're a small team but that's that makes you feel like all of the time that you're investing into people though is a thousand percent worth it it's a thousand percent worth it because you're just growing a stronger team right and they feel valued too. And I love one thing that I've learned from you is that at the end of, you know, meetings or touch bases or whatever, you always ask, and I think that you're being sincere about it. I absolutely uh, am being sincere about <laughs> it. Is how can I help or what do you need from me? And I think sometimes leaders or bosses who aren't leaders maybe are would never consider to actually stop and ask that question on like how can I help you do your job better Mm -hmm. or how can I help you and I think our team is pretty open and honest and we'll say actually I'm not understanding this or I need help still with whatever it might be right or making sure it's clear like if you don't have that answer right now maybe they don't know because they haven't done it yet but I'm here so when you if there is something along the way like don't be afraid to raise your hand and say help I need help yes so I would love um to, to put your list of books mm. in the show notes because I think that they're so good. And then maybe you can put what, like, characteristic, like what made you choose that, that book, book yeah. for whatever that person is working on because it's, like, such an amazing list of books yeah. already. And then we can put in um, the tools that we use too, like the self eval tool right. and the personal growth tool. All those things, like, yeah. Yeah, they're already created. And even to do them on yourself mm-hmm. is pretty beneficial too. You may yeah. be in the position where you don't have a huge team yet. You're just starting out. 
or you just are, it's a skill that you want to develop in yourself. These are all great development tools that really help you self reflect. Yeah. I'll include some other books that I remember yeah. like way back in the early days of this journey that I've been on, um, mm -hmm. that I read. And I believe that they were game changing for me. I know you even gave me two books, which yeah. I'm psyched I have to read. But I'm really excited about myself too, too, and I'm really excited. I have not opened one of them, but I'm very excited to open that. Well, book. they made it to my <laughs> nightstand. Same. So I, home, I, I like, oh, feel right like <laughs> we're off to a good start, right? I know. They're like there with my reading glasses. <laughs> yep. Now I just have to actually turn off the television and grab the book. Yeah. So. Okay, I'm going to ask you a super personal question. Okay. What do you think you need to work on as a leader? And actually, or you could answer it for me. Like, what do you think I need to work on as a leader? <laughs> Why don't, yeah, I can answer. You have to do it for me too. Um, or is there anything that you are working on yourself? Like in developing in yourself? Well, the book that I chose for myself was The Faith-Driven Entrepreneur because mm -hmm. it is a big facet and I feel like my journey back to this um, I know what I want, but I think I also, I want to just continue yeah. to develop myself in How that does sense. That show up actually. Right. Like yeah. what does that actually mean? You know right. what I mean? Um, like, I, I don't know what that actually Like how means. do you put that into actual everyday practice? Right. So that, yeah, that's cool. That's one. And I think myself, I get frustrated with myself right now. I think for my, it has nothing to do with leadership, but I think if I can improve in this, it will make me a better leader. Uh, I have to work on boundaries and time management for mm. my work in my life, right? So when I'm at work, I'm at work. When I'm at life, I'm at life, right? Like when I'm home, I'm home. Mm -hmm. And I don't, like I'm not doing this well and there's there's a gap and I have to figure out where that gap is. I think one of the changes we just made in the schedule should help, but there's something yeah. that's not working and I, I have got to dig into this because these are very important years and I need to make sure that when I'm home, I'm home. And I'm, I'm not doing that well. So, but I think while that's not leadership per se, mm -hmm. it will make me a better leader because I'm not going to resent the time that I'm like doing certain things and I'm frustrated and I don't yeah. take it out on people. So. Right. When it's ultimately up to you. Yeah. You're it the is, boss. You, right? get to, you get to choose. I know. I just feel this like insane um, obligation, but who do I have to answer to? You, you're mm, not going to yell no. at me that a picture wasn't uploaded <laughs> by five no. o'clock. You know, I mean, that's not what it is, but no. Yeah. Uh, and the book that you got me is, um, the power of influence, right? Is that the name of it? The gift of influence. The gift of influence, mm -hmm. which I am also psyched to read because I have said that I, I struggle with mostly not seeing myself as a leader. <laughs> I see myself mostly as an employee. <laughs> me too. I see myself really, as right. Like yeah. I'm doing a lot of, I'm still, I am doing a lot of the day-to-day -day work, which is fine. I'm not complaining about that at all. But sometimes I view myself like we are such a close-knit team and we all work together that I sometimes see myself as working along. I, just, I want to work alongside of. Um, but I don't think I recognize, though, how much my attitude or my you know, how I enter a room, if, whether it's with an attitude or if I'm mad or if I'm, you know, I don't, I don't think about how that affects other people. Mm -hmm. So I need to be much more cautious of that because mm -hmm. I'm kind of sometimes just in my little bubble and it's all about me and my feelings, you know? So I know, but you know, I've, I've really challenged our team sometimes if they have a thought to talk to you because you're very open. And as soon as I'm like, Hey, what's going on here? You're like, what me? What happened? What did I do? Like, it's not intentional. No, it's not. It's not intentional. Cause if I have an issue with you, I'm going to just tell you, <laughs> like, I'm going to talk about it. Right. You can be like, like, I don't really like that text message. <laughs> right. Like I didn't, well, like yesterday that made me feel ick. I'm like, okay. And then we right. talked about it. So yeah. Right. Just talk about it. Just talk about it. Cause I'm pretty much unaware. And I've been that way my entire life. I'm very much Unaware, like I would not be, I've never been like you sitting at the restaurant with all the people, like if you felt like they were looking at you, I am a thousand percent oblivious. I don't notice people staring. I don't notice people looking my direction. Mm. I am just, I'm unaware of how other people perceive me or I just am, I've been like this since high school. Like I'm just in my tunnel and I don't, I think it's cause I don't like, 
any attention. Like, don't, I don't, don't look at me. Don't talk to me. I'm just coming in to do my job and do my thing and leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's not a good way to be, but. And I think, I mean, I'm still in the day to day too. So it's hard for me to like pick my head up from, from a computer. Cause a lot of the work that I do is behind the scenes, mm-hmm. but it's day to day operations to keep the business going, you know? And I forget like, look up look around right like I remind myself I consciously get up like you go downstairs check with everybody talk to people walk around I never leave without saying bye like in the zone because you're like I don't want to take this work home with me so I've got to finish it here so that I can have a boundary that I can go home Mm -hmm. and not have to do this later because but I I want to make sure that I go check on everybody talk to everybody do they need anything la 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 all the things it's a balance I do feel like I'm will just I'm gonna share one more thought that I feel like just listening to you Mm. I feel like a good third book lineup oh, great I think emotional intelligence might be good for you oh okay great because it's not about <laughs> because it's not about you it's about learning just cues or mm. how to read people and I think it might yeah. it might it might just be an interesting read I think you've just said that I'm not emotionally intelligent so thank you very much for that <laughs> 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 well, there's you said always, it, not me. No, I'm just there's always more to learn, and I'm psyched about it. Yeah. I mean, I've read it a couple times. But yeah. even going back to read books that you read in the beginning and read them again because yeah. your situation's different. Yeah. No, this is a situation I've never been in before, so I have a ton to learn. So I need, I need to actually do the work also to yeah. well, and get I think, better. You and should I, always be striving to get better right? and learn. I think I need your help also with this, like, boundary thing like you've got to put me inside a a little box and say enough Mm. yeah okay good to know Mm -hmm. um okay so we need your help next uh so we have the segment at the end no questions unanswered unanswered we've changed the topics basically ask us Anything. anything Uh, So we would love your help to be able to do that. You can literally ask us anything about motherhood. It doesn't have to be necessarily about business. It can be our favorite food or ice cream. It can be... (laughs) Don't ask us that because we eat everything. I mean, I can answer, but... Uh, (laughs) But you can literally ask us anything, whether it's a process or a tip and trick or whatever. So you can actually just DM us those questions. You can obviously put them on the the pod notes, but you can just DM us also on Instagram Mm -hmm. at only prettier design. Because now it's all under one Instagram handle. Yeah. So we're at only prettier design and you can find everything there. Oh, and do you guys know you can watch this on YouTube? I, I know you mostly listen. I only watch podcasts. I thoroughly enjoy watching I don't know why I feel more connected I feel like <laughs> which I, I thought about this the other day because you usually watch yeah while walking uh I <laughs> usually <laughs> like, how watch does that work? well <laughs> whatever watch while driving walking uh <laughs> I'll put it on uh when I get ready in the morning typically like I'll oh, just I'll have it on like leaning by my mirror like when I'm getting ready in the morning got but it anyway you can watch this on YouTube too Yes, YouTube's really getting like a ton of stuff uploaded. So if you're not sus- subscribed there, definitely subscribe because we are doing a ton of mm-hmm. DIY videos. We're going to do some flower arranging. We're going to do some tools and tequila. You can Lots provide your really own tequila. really good free content there. So yeah, a that's lot of a great place that we're do. to subscribe, like and share, blah, blah, blah. But we'll do all the things. Yeah. Anyway. So stay tuned for that. Thanks. <laughs>